So, uh, while well, I suppose this is not technically period, we've all heard stories about bards and minstrels standing before courts or at feasts telling stories of the Greeks and of the Battle of Troy. So this might be a little bit long, for which I apologize, but I've actually never performed this before. Bef when the Greeks finally make it to the coast and they make their camps, um, Achilles will not assist because Agamemnon has stolen his slave girl Brysis from him. And so they sit in council endlessly trying to figure out what they're going to do because without Achilles they do not feel that they can win the day. Hector, being a smart and cunning man, says, let's go get them now. So this is where we pick up the story of the Iliad. Achaeans all ran to and fro among the hollow ships, sheltering near bow and stern as tall as towering cliffs. But Trojans surged among them, swiftly as the rising tide, and we fell back into the camp to build a shield wall wide. Strong Nestor sought to rally Myrmidons to battle's might. Be men, my friends, be strong and proud, so we may keep the night. Remember wives, remember sons, remember fathers dear, and strive to keep your heads and do not now give in to fear. As if Athena, goddess wise, cleared clouds before our sight. Down the lines of Troy and Greece I saw from left to right. Across the gap I spied a lord. Twas Hector and his rank. He bade it beckon call the Trojans to o'ercome our flank. But Ajax, oh tall Ajax with his great and mighty pike, a seaboard weapon long and sharp, he swung it, he wheeled it to strike. As leaping now from ship to ship he swung it and he called Achaeans to defend the shelters and the ships so tall. Now Hector there before his men, he would not hold them back. A wolf among the hounds of hell, Greek stags he would attack. With mighty Zeus, the king of gods, Prince Hector stood on bowed. And, he, and as he urged his Trojans on, his battle song blew loud. Bring your swords and two-edged spears and black-thonged blades of war. Bring fire and bring armor, beat the Chians off our shores. Too long has Agamemnon kept our Trojan ways in check. Now is the time to lay our sharpened blades upon his neck. For Zeus's lightning blinds their eyes as he did hours before. As Troy's old El City elders begged to battle on no more, so long I strove to take these ships and burn them to the ground. And now a Trojan champion, Zeus, the king of gods, has found. And as he sang, the Trojans strove even harder at our wall. They broke through here and there as Denons fought and died and fell. And even Ajax, with flashing pike, was forced to back away from warriors of Troy who seemed foregone to take the day. But in response to Hector's song, did Ajax sing aloud, Men at arms to Ares, fight against this Trojan crowd. There's no one past our lines to come and save us from this fight. No citadels, no armies in reserve to lend their might. We crossed the sea to Troy, and now it's all of Troy we face. Don't let this plain along the shore become your burial place. So fight, you mighty Myrmidons, you strong Achaean bands, for safe return to mighty Greece lies only in our hands. We Danans, seeking Ajax pride, were doubled in our strife, as Ajax shook thrust his sharpened pike, taking countless Trojan lives. The torches that they carried fell to quench their flame in blood of Trojan warriors that lay around where Ajax stood. But even though a dozen and a dozen more lay there, e'en Ajax of the Danans could not face Prince Hector fair, as driven back by countless blows upon his shining helm, and pounding on his shield, he was close to overwhelm. So now comes Hector, Ajax's pike against his mighty sword, with hacking blows behind the point, the pike head off was shorn. Ajax knew with sinking heart this was King Zeus's deed. He fought for breath as aching arms moved with slowing speed. No choice did Ajax have, and with his men we did retreat. No longer with an equal might could we the Trojans meet. And through the cries and screams of Myrmidons in mortal pain came crackling and hissing of Achaean ships inflamed. T'was after battle's end when we were told Patroclus' plea, until Lord Achilles beside his ships beside the sea. As Ajax and Achaeans brave withstood Prince Hector's thrust, Patroclus begged Achilles' aid and sweet Achilles' trust. For though Achilles angered still at Agamemnon's theft, he was a man of war, he knew of battle's warp and weft. 
And as the Myrmidons of Greece fought on within the fray, he gave to Patroclus a stronger plan to win the day. Peleus' son, he would not fight till flames had reached his ships, but realized he must the loss of Bryce's come to grips. So handing over armor bright to Patroclus' hand, Achilles made his bid to rally brave Achaean stand. Throw yourself at Troy, he bade Patroclus, but standing tall. Stop all Hector's army, let Achaeans heed the call. In armor of Achilles you will turn the Trojans back, but only save the ships, no more, or glory I will lack. No march to Troy without me can your Myrmidons advance. Just drive the Trojan fire from hollow ships before your lance. For when Apollo's son upon the ruin Troy has shown, t'will be the day we brought her down, you and I alone. My rage at Agamemnon, he who took my rightful prize, I won her with my mighty spear. But Agamemnon's lies took her away, my Bryce is sweet, as if I were a child. He kept her for his own, and now my prize has been defiled. But even though I'll let it go, forgive the trickster king, I swore to gods I would not fight, no war cry would I sing till flames of Trojan warriors approached my hollow ships. So wear my armor bright, and loose my war song on your lips. They'll see my helmet's beetle brow before them on the field, and thus will Trojan soldiers flee the battle, or they'll yield, if only Atreus' kingly son had given me such trust as Patroclus before me, eager now for battle's dust. I hear the men of Troy outside, they're stooping on our camp, and even Diomedes cannot rise with his wrappings damp, nor Agamemnon challenging the Trojans at the wall. The only thing that I can hear is princeling Hector's call. So go, my friend Patroclus, wear my armor, be my shade, and strive into the battlefield with warm fame, word fame that I made. Drive the Trojans back into the night, that we may live, and make my glory greater, so the Argive king will give my Brysis back to me, along with gold and silver more. You do this in my armor, Save our ships along the shore, but then return, Patroclus, for your battle lust burns bright only when you have me there to bring it all to light. I warn you, do not drive to Troy to bring an end to war. Do not tempt the ire of gods on Mount Olympus far, for if Apollo loose his bow, the Trojans he defend. Without me there to take the lead, he'll bring you to your end. From where they sat, Patroclus and Achilles saw the fire of tall Achaean warships burning like a funeral pyre. To arms, Patroclus, arm yourself, stern Prince Achilles cried, before your ships are cinders, and on dead Trojan soil we lie. Here, take my greaves and breastplate, blazing stars upon the chest, my shield and my helmet with its two dark horsehair crests, my sword with silvered hilt, and my two battle spears you'll take, and with blood of Trojan men's my blade's thirst you will slake. And then the war team, horses fine, yoked together as a team, all in bronze as well were they, all polished to a sheen. Achilles rallied Myrmidons, wolves hungry for the fight. They swarmed around Patroclus, ready to bring down their might. Men of fifty ships all stood, of five captains in command. Menthesius and Phoenix, Pisander of Malmus's land. Alcimedon and Eudorus also held Achilles' trust, and like a mighty spear there into battle they thrust. My comrades, brothers Myrmidon, you've waited through days long to make true spoken threats get past to right Prince Paris is wrong. And as we've waited battle nigh, our anger has but grown. Now is the chance to change the tide and strike the Trojans down. A singing cry burst forth from every Myrmidon's full lips. No more would Trojan warriors be free to fire our ships. Their ranks pulled closer, closer still, tight as a good stone wall, advancing on the battlefront between the Greek ships tall. And as Patroclus strode before them vanguard, far in front, Achilles went back to his tent, where he did voice his want. O oh Zeus, I hold my well-wrought cup with wine to please you, king. O oh, as I sacrifice to you, this prayer to you I sing. Pelixian, Dodona's lord, of whom the Selli speak, I beg you now, bring me the conclusion that I seek. I send the Myrmidons to fight proud Troy along the shore. Please give Patroclus victory to drive them off no more. Just that, King Zeus, to save our ships and bring him safe to me as I stay here among the ships here beached next to the sea. He must return with armor mine from driving Trojans off. I sacrifice five bulls and give you sheep with wool so soft. 
And then Achilles poured the wine to fall on Trojan sand. And Zeus did hear and vow to give Patroclus victory grand. But safe return was not ordained, for friend or armor bright of this Achilles did not know. He simply watched the fight. Now on did proud Patroclus lead, with men arrayed behind. The fire of burning hollow ships on helms and spear points shined. For Zeus, the king of gods, had made half-truth of Achilles' prayer. Patroclus would have victory, but too would he die there.